you talk about some of these unbelievable athletes, but how about some of the other people that you probably wanted to interview, like the president of the United States? Maybe uh, you wanted to interview uh, Donald Trump or, or Ronald Reagan or one of these guys. Is there a particular person that you haven't interviewed yet that you would absolutely love to interview in the future? It's a great question. Well, the good thing for the talking to goats side is Jim's interviewed the last 10 U.S. presidents. So it's actually a chapter in there. And I'm sure you guys will be shocked, but we spent a lot of time weighing how much to include on Trump and what to say, uh, you know, as we went through the writing process. Uh, if I had to pick somebody to interview of anyone I'd never have. Oh, that's tough. I'm trying to think even. I, I don't have a good answer Gandhi? for you. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Like, I've interviewed most of the people that I'd want to. Probably would be in a different sport. Right. You know, to me, like somebody like LeBron James or – but I've done a lot of tennis. I'm just, like, cycling through the sports in my head, you know. Um, yeah, you know, it would be somebody with an interesting story. Let's say Jay Cutler for now, and I uh, hope he says yes. <laughs> so is is there any athlete that you've interviewed that you were like, wow, I did not expect him to have this kind of personality to him and maybe something that a surprising element of his either his personality or his life, something in uh, outside off the field, something like that. And if so, who is it? Yeah, I would say Dak Prescott's a good example. Like every athlete I go to see, like whether it's Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady or whoever I'm writing about. They always say that they're like a real normal human person, you know, that they, they can connect and they're just like me. and They have kids and, you know, a, a heavy schedule, blah, blah, blah. They actually like the first guy, like a, he really felt like a normal human being, which kind of surprised me. Like he ordered DoorDash at his house for us. You know, we like he's got a, a golf course in the backyard with like which makes him totally not normal. I realize. But, you know, it's like uh, one green and like three different aiming parts, you know, out there goofing around. I mean, and. He just struck me as like a kind of guy you'd like to have a beer with, you know, and, uh, you know, somebody like that is revealing. I'll give you another example in New York sports. I thought Eric Mangini was incredibly interesting to cover. And I covered him and Rex Ryan at the times. My first job was covering the Jets. And Rex was interesting in a totally different way, a totally bombastic way. But if I had to say, like, which guy would I go get a beer with and who might I learn more from? I thought that Eric was way more interesting than he portrayed himself to be in press conferences when he was, you know, essentially Bella checking his way through them. And I just think a lot of times you're kind of surprised by that. I've talked to guys who like are into drawing comic books. I've talked to guys who are into, you know, four wheelers. I've, I went uh, dog food shopping with Terrence Crawford, the boxer one time. I, I mean, it's just uh, these guys are more normal than we think. And they have a wide range of interests. And usually that's what I'm trying to find out. You know, what, what do they think about something you wouldn't expect? You know, talking about comic books, uh, I see a bunch of them behind you. Uh, I see you're a <laughs> no, collector. Are, these are my Super Bowl covers. Oh, those, those, oh I, I thought they were yeah, comics. Yeah. I didn't see them back, but those are. No, my buddy does the Warhol thing for me. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. It's, very, it's very interesting. And I, I will say this, man. In, in every every corner of the world that anybody goes, if you're a writer, if you're a personality, I, I know Howard Stern, uh, you know, personally, I've done some work for him and as a DJ and, uh, you know, having a conversation with him, everybody thinks the guy's a, a crazy lunatic, an idiot, an ass. Meanwhile, the guy donates more money, more time to trying to help animals out here on the island, trying to help people. So, I, I mean, and by the way, Eric Mangini, I, I, Eric Mangini, the Jets made a big mistake letting him go. The whole thought thought process of bringing in Brett Favre, he told the, the Jets and Woody Johnson told Eric Mangini, bring him in. If he doesn't play well, he doesn't do this, you can get rid of him. You can pick any quarterback you want. Instead, they keep Brett Favre and they get rid of Eric Mangini. So uh, the Jets didn't do him right when he walked away from Bill Belichick after Bill Belichick took his his clothes, his his box of stuff in, in the office over there in, in, in New England and throw it outside the door because he didn't want him to go over there to Jets and coach the Jets. So it's, it's just a shame how he got treated by the New York Jets. And, and to me, I think if you look at all the draft stock that Eric Mangini had, I mean, you're talking about some of the best players the Jets have ever had. Uh, Ferguson, Mangold, Revis. These guys were, were Eric Mangini's picks. They were his his guys. So uh, for anybody to take shots at Eric Mangini, and a lot of people don't like Eric Mangini still here, uh, they don't know what the hell they're talking about. I love covering that team. 
all the guys you mentioned, you know, Revis Island, I still remember it. I did like the Art of Trash Talk with Bart Scott, where we like watched wrestling videos at his house. <laughs> Get me to do some sort of cross face chicken wing thing. I don't know what it is, but I did it. Uh, Chris Jenkins like cooked for me because he was writing, I was writing about how he was like healthier and losing weight. I did like Nick, Nick Mangold, uh, how much he loves wine and how he would go on these trips every summer. I'm kind of weird and like to explore things that way. Revis and I built like the perfect corner one time with the, you know, everybody's different attributes. It was a really, really fun uh, team to cover. Bart Scott was absolutely a riot, you know. I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was. <laughs> so I, I was going to ask about uh, the like kind of modern, like future branding stuff like we're seeing now with social media, also the college players now with the NIL rules now being able to brand the way they did. So how do you think that'll change the world of these other athletes? Like you're saying, they're more not like jock-like and more normal, like they like other things more than people think. How do you think that'll change the perception of the way we see these athletes as a whole, both in college and in professional sports? Yeah, I think it'll be really interesting because to me, the key is like, are they going to be revealing? You know, we see things like the Players' Tribune or, you know, places where they have a lot more control over the content. And I think most of the time I listen to these podcasts or watch these shows or read these stories and think it's not that interesting. Or maybe there's one sentence in there that really draws me into another story. I think if guys take control of their own stuff in a way where they're still revealing, where they're revealing more of themselves, you know, this is the first year a college athlete ever had like a representative reach out to me. That was kind of weird. That's definitely going to change some stuff. I just feel like the, the more famous they get in general, the more they're cordoned off, you know, the more that it's harder to get to them, the more you get in 25 minutes in a conference room as opposed to like, you know, hanging out with them and seeing a little bit more of who they actually are. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to actually maybe my guess is we'll know less about them, like less actually interesting revealing stuff. But I really hope that I'm wrong because there's so many ways to like get your message out. Now the question is, are you doing it just as a brand? Is it really easy to see through exactly what your aims are? Have you said anything interesting in the podcast that you're putting out? I think there are definitely guys that do it really well. You know, to me, Brandon Marshall's podcast is pretty interesting. Um, And I think that you're seeing more guys like do their own production too. You know, Kevin Durant did the documentary in PG County you just seen a lot of that stuff. I think there's room for all of it. I just hope that we don't lose, you know, sort of these windows into guys that are actually revealing and it instead get these sort of prepackaged, you know, talking points where everything just feels like a presidential tour. And to me, that's the stuff I just totally tune out. So I hope it's not as, as bad in the future as I think it will be, but there's not really a lot of reason to think that it won't get more constricted. Quick, get us some better while you have the chance. <laughs> I, I mean, some of this, some of the stuff that they put on Showtime, these talk show podcasts. I think it's ridiculous. You have uh, uh, Jackson and uh, what's his name, Matt Barnes, doing a show. They got all these basketball players on, from Kobe Bryant, may rest in peace, to Kevin Durant, and these guys. I I was never a Matt Barnes fan, never. And and, and some of the stories that I've heard about him on and off the court, I have no respect for somebody like that. And i got to watch his crazy ass on a podcast show show that Showtime's paying him. And I'm watching this, and I'm like, this guy doesn't even know how to ask a question. Why the hell is he running a podcast? But that's just me. I don't know. Steven Jackson, too. I have enough to say about him with his quirky attitude, too, on and off the court, too. But when you talk about... Uh, you know, making your picks on who you think is going to win the Super Bowl, who you think is going to win the NBA championship. I know you're a sports fan. Who do you got going to the Super Bowl, and who do you have winning the Super Bowl this year? I picked uh, Packers and Chiefs. I like the narrative arc of that uh, selection. I feel like the AFC is really a weird conference to call. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll be pretty interested in see how if Derrick Henry comes back and they just kind of steamroll in Tennessee. But I also kind of feel like they could lose to, like, the Patriots, if they beat the Bills, like the first game they play. And so I think the Packers have been the most complete team throughout the year, which is wild with the amount of turbulence they've gone through and the amount of, you know, sort of infighting that's been pretty obvious, I think, from even the outside. Um, I think the NFC is a stronger conference, so I'm more interested to see how some of those work. But to me, the Bucks are pretty banged up. Cowboys have looked amazing at times and kind of struggled at others. So I would love a Packers-Chiefs because I think it's Super Bowl one rematch. It's LaFleur and Reed. It's, you know, Rodgers and Mahomes. 
And I think it would be, from a narrative standpoint, really interesting. I picked the Packers to win in a close game, uh, which just means you should bet somewhere else because I'm never right. So, Well, I, I will tell you this. Uh, before the season started, Speedy will even come out and tell you, I had the Packers in Tennessee going to the Super Bowl. And both of them are number one teams. I do believe Derrick Henry's coming back. And I wouldn't be surprised now with uh, uh, coming. What was his name again? Who they brought up the linebacker coming Cunningham Cunningham coming to the team. It's really transitioned this defense to be one of the best. They were one of the worst defenses in the league the year before. Now they're one of the best defenses in the league. And they've really transitioned not to be an offensive team as much as you thought they were going to be this year. A.J. Brown wasn't 100% healthy. Julio Jones that they brought in really wasn't 100% healthy. And Derrick Henry was out half the season. So, uh, I, I mean, now they're going to be at full strength and the defense. I, I, I'm not a big Ryan Tannehill fan, okay? I don't. I, I think his wife is beautiful, okay? That's what stands out in my eyes with Ryan Tannehill. And, and the fact that Adam Gase, every single quarterback that's gotten away, away from Adam Gase besides Sam Donald has actually become something, okay? So that's a, that's a whole other story. But I would agree with you. I think, but I, I picked Tennessee in the beginning of the year to, go, to win the Super Bowl. I think this is Aaron Rodgers' last hurrah with the Green Bay Packers. I think he's gone next year. I think he's going to be looking elsewhere, maybe the Broncos, maybe somewhere else. There's, there's quite a few teams that will be looking for uh, the best quarterback in the NFL, and hands down, the best quarterback. I don't care what anybody says. As good as Tom Brady is, he's the best. And by the way, did you like what those uh, writers were saying? Like, I won't, ro- I won't vote for Aaron Rodgers because he's a bad guy. Could you believe a writer would say that? where you know, these writers have the opportunity to vote and they're throwing themselves under the bus. If I was the NFL right now, I'd be like, you know what? You're not voting anymore. Yeah. I mean, would, am I surprised? No. Uh, do I agree with it? Absolutely not. I think too often in our business, in my business, the, the idea is to moralize from up high on the mountaintop. <laughs> uh, most writers I know do not live perfect lives. Uh, most would not welcome the kind of scrutiny that they bring to the world and I don't agree with a lot of things that Aaron Rodgers says, but he's had an amazing season. In fact, I think it's hard to find a comparable. When you look at everything that's gone on, the amount of um, craziness with the vaccine stuff, the you're fighting with your boss. I mean, this is like they should be like eight and eight, you know, after everything they've gone through. And yet they've been the only team, I think, in pro football that has been really consistent throughout the year. I mean, there's no reason to think that they won't at least have a very good chance of winning. And to me, that speaks to his talent level above all else. Like, he kept it together, had an amazing season, should win MVP again. And, you know, I don't have to care about him as a human being if I'm just looking at, like, is he a good football player? All right. One bold prediction for the NFL playoffs. For me? Uh, Yep. Right now, in my bracket that I put in, uh, I have the Patriots beating the Bills and then the Titans. Very interesting. With mm-hmm. Derrick Henry? Or lose on Sunday or whatever, but, you know, <laughs> here we are. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, Greg, I really appreciate you joining us. We definitely would love to get you on again. Your story is amazing, and, and just who you are as a person and what you've done so far in your life. And by the way, you're not that old. I'm 39. I'm going to be 40, so we're probably not far far apart from one another. I started uh, I started as an executive producer at CBS. I wanted to leave CBS and, and, and start my own thing. I've been working on building uh, my network of the world, Worldwide Sports Radio Network, and now I want to pitch this show. I think one, our show is as good as any show right now on the market. Uh, we're very funny. We're very stupid, but we love to interview people, and we love to have fun, man, and, and that's what we love to do, and, and, and to be to be spontaneous and, and, and just be ourselves is something that a lot of radio networks and radio shows don't have on any market. And that's what makes us a little bit different. So we really, really appreciate you joining us and we'll definitely get you on again. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. You actually made me miss New York. You know, I've, I've been gone for about seven years now, but you know, brought back some memories. Well, that, that's good. And and I and I'll tell you this right now. Anytime you want to come to New York, you want to stay at a place, you're more than welcome. I got a nice place over here. You can stay and hang out over here. We'll take you to the wineries over here on Long Island. You and your <laughs> wife and your family. It's beautiful over here in the summertime. It really is. Perfect. Absolutely. I might leave the kids, but other than that, all good. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for joining yeah. us. Tell the fans how they can find you and. Uh, uh, how they can find your book too. Yeah. I'm at uh, SI Greg Bishop on Twitter, uh, same on Instagram. And then uh, we have author pages at SI that have all our work. And then uh, talking to goats has its own page, uh, Harper Collins and then um, Amazon, all that kind of stuff. So 
if anybody wants to pick a book up, that'd be great. I'll send you guys a copy. Just uh, send me your address. Absolutely. Speedy will, Speedy will definitely, and, and definitely we'll follow you. You follow us. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to getting you on again. You really are awesome. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me.